Uh, my name is uh, Truls Lee. I've uh, been in publication for 25 years. Um, newspapers, monthly. I'm from Norway, so I was working in a monthly and a weekly newspaper and a daily newspaper. So, And uh, the last uh, or four years, until two years ago, I was the editor of the Docs magazine, which is the main documentary magazine in the world, you can say. And it's called the European, but it's, it was the biggest one for 20 years. So I'm going to give you some examples from, from these uh, publications uh, about criticism. So I think uh, my, uh, my uh, angle here today will be to talk about writing re reviews and then going into do criticism through film. So, but first I'd like to just, to, how many of you are journalists or studying journalism? And uh, how many is in film studies? Yeah, that's good. Okay, because I have a lot of examples from films, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, um, so <clears throat> I also myself have been been a filmmaker for a while. I've been traveling to the Middle East, Haiti, uh, a lot of countries doing kind of documentary, but now as an editor of this uh, newspaper in Norway, it has 30,000 copies a month. Uh, I'm more doing video journalism besides writing myself. So I just wanted to give you some examples of journalism because I have a maybe with my background in philosophy, I have a kind of, uh, I want the writers to be a little more reflective than what's usual. I mean, you have different genres of, of journalism. You have reportage, you have news, you have interviews but also the critique or the re review, which is what I'm going to talk about here, maybe more. So uh, I am always asking my uh, journalists to be a little more essayistic. And I will tell you more about what I mean by that, going through some of the slides. Um, the uh, Docs magazine, I'm not sure if you read it, uh, if you are new studying students, you have maybe not seen all of this. Uh, but, but uh, it's uh, 20 years of criticism of, doc of film, uh, of documentaries. And um, it's from all over the world. I was traveling when I was the editor of this magazine for 10 festivals a year, totally confused by all the people you meet. <laughs> but it's uh, trying to represent some attitudes of film because film has this connection to reality. So. I'm especially then focusing on movies that matters. There is something at stake. So you will see that by my, uh, my examples maybe. I, I like to just give you one example from that magazine and that was about uh, Pasolini. How many knows about Pasolini here? Well, that was not many. <laughs> but he, he is very telling about being a critical filmmaker and also writer. He was doing mostly fiction films like Saloma. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of very interesting films to see, but he was um, kind of critic of his time. And I was once in this article I'm writing, I was writing about his um, rage, his anger. He was very angry about politics of his time. And he was, and I, the way I'm writing this article is in the start to tell about how he was killed. As you maybe heard some of you, he was killed in Rome. He was a homosexual and he was uh, a little outside with a boy or a, or a man and somebody killed him because he was too much critical to the society and politics. So he was murdered. And I'm trying starting the article by writing about how that happened. So in a way, it's a story in the start. And then I go, then I follow in this article, which in, is in two pages or three pages, a little about his way of doing, what you say, text films. He has three, four films called Notes on something, Notes on Low, Notes on, and I'm trying to copy that in a way in writing. So this is my notes on seeing this film. So this is not a typical review. It's about me and my emotions when I'm seeing this film. And I'm explaining first the start of this thing that happened when he was killed, and then I'm going more into the criticism. He's talking about the war in North Korea. He's talking about um, 
the the cap is criticizing capitalism is criticizing the, the i mean this is from news reels he's collecting a lot on news reels it's not just like morrison was doing here uh, yeah, last night but it's taking things from his contemporary time not from as morrison was doing from the 1920s and just picking all this news and commenting it with a voiceover and that's the strength of the essayist to use a voiceover to have reflections of what you see. So I, I'm talking about this and I'm doing a reflection on his reflections in a way. Uh, but suddenly I'm seeing my, I'm, I'm, I'm so, what to say, obsessed into this film when I'm seeing it because it's a kind of melancholic trait of 1963 of the times of North Korea, about workers, about beauty, Marilyn Monroe and all these things. And I'm going to show you a little clip on that later, but um, it, it's so, uh, challenging. So I'm sit feeling that suddenly I'm sitting there with an open mouth, like I was didn't feel that what I was doing myself. My body was reacting to all these things from that time. So these things I'm putting in the text. So in a way, it's not only referring objectively about what his, the film is about. It's really about my uh, experience of seeing the film, and also this kind of very nihilistic. Uh, reflection of Europe because he's seeing, for example, he's talking about the fascist traits of the bourgeois in this new Europe, European community. In 1963, he was aware about what was happening and now we are 50 years later, so he was really a kind of prophet in a way, the way he was seeing the future. So I think he's a kind of very intelligent guy and I'm trying to convey that through the texts. Here he's sitting in the wind in the top there. He was working all the time. So, And he also said, for example, that uh, this uh, jazz of Gershwin and Gardner was making people forget Marx. I mean, you can hear the attitude of the, the leftists, of course, which I like in a way, yeah. And he's uh, also talking about Marilyn Monroe. Did she really know what she was doing by this aesthetical approach that she was kind of making the beauty as a cover of all the things? I mean, kind of things for th food for thought. So this is the kind of films I really like to write about myself and I encourage my writers to do that too. Another example, uh, he was, some people think that uh, Oh, sorry, uh, that this uh, filmmaker was only making fictional films, but that's also the, the research of a, a journalist or maybe a filmmaker who wants to go deeper into things is to find out more because there is four or five documentaries about his maybe 15, 20 films. So that's what I'm, we are gripping here. In This is another journalist writing about him too. Okay, um, then uh, further into journalism, this is the newspaper I'm heading. And we have the, the part two of the newspaper is about documentary and literature. It's not about fiction films, it's about documentary films. So that's my, my thing, you can say. I'm, this is a newspaper that is 60 years old, but when I took over two years ago, I redefined the newspaper into a more anarchistic or neo-anarchistic attitude instead of the old socialistic way it was before. And uh, maybe social liberal, I'm not sure what kind of values you have here, but at least this is the, the project of uh, this Norwegian newspaper in this welfare state of Norway, this 51st state of America, which is up there where I'm coming from, where it's where a lot of consumerism, capitalism and the bourgeois and Festung Norway, all these kind of things that we like to criticize from inside. Norway is not a very happy state, or just have a very happy people, lucky people, but they have a lot of money. I'm living in Berlin now, by the way. Yeah. Um, give you some examples of the latest articles. I will go back to the English edition of this a little later, but uh, as you see here, there is a, there is a, a a Czech director, Andrea Gulkova, we wrote about her film. She's premiering next week in Leipzig. And the way the, um, the critic or the reviewer is writing her is 
starting again with this story thing. She's talking about being in a lot of museums and all these erotic details you see. She's overwhelmed by why is there so much focus on sex. And then later on she goes into the film. So she's starting with something outside of the film and then she goes into this film. And this film is about, uh, you haven't seen it yet because the world premiere is next week, uh, but it is about um, an avant-garde artist and his life, his divorce, his arrogance, and also flipping around in a kind of, to say, fragmentary body, focusing on the body, like you see the breeze there. She's, it, the film is starting with a penis. Is this, uh, what, is, what does she mean by focusing on all these details? But as you see in, in the film, when you read through this text, she's exposing a lot of scenes from the film and then she comments it. So it's, I think the essayistic style is still in her critic here. It's not a normal review. The normal review is inside the film. She's going outside. Okay. Um, the artist's name is Riker. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's Czech. Anybody heard about him? No? The main thing is he's a totally uh, unknown artist, <laughs> but he's very aware of himself. So that's maybe the, the, the fem female director. She's confronting that. So she has this kind of opposition, which is also very important in an essay. I think that's an essay film too. I'll tell you more about what I think about essays later. Um, here is the, uh, yeah, it's not so well seen, but uh, that's the English edition I'm coming back to in the end of the speech. Here is another text I did with uh, a, a war correspondent from Norway. He li was living in Egypt for four years, but 15 years in the Middle East. Then he came back to Norway after his, uh, uh, his job there, down there. I met him, sat down with him, and did his interview, and I wanted him to talk about the meaning of being a journalist. I mean, he was confronting war. He was sometimes in situations where he was in danger, uh, bombs going around, and I wonder what, why was he doing this thing. So my philosophical background is always trying to confront a little why a war reporter is going to these areas. And, he's, and I'm explaining in the start here about the situation where he's coming to a, ma a massacre, where he's seeing bodies, 50 bodies just in a big humble, and, and they are burned. So he sees the spines and the heads in this dark thing. And he's saying to me, this is a place humans shouldn't move into. He can't be there, so he's just going back, you know. So that was too much. And you can't describe that too much in a newspaper either. And also films from war zones, there is always a limit for what a, a big audience can uh, adapt. So I was trying to push him a little. And for example, he's coming to a place where people are starving and he's coming down there with his Norwegian microphone to interview them. And they are saying, well, what are you coming with? Yeah, I'm going to tell the world about you. He said, but don't you come with food? And he was standing there looking at his microphone. So I'm, I'm confronting him in this interview about where's the limit between being an activist and a reporter, an objective reporter and a subjective activist. I think he's kind of a uh, little... He didn't expect that kind of interview. So I think it's important for me to... to to talk about being a political person or just being a technical observer. I think that's the difference. When you are a journalist, you should think about that. Another journalist, after the Sabra Shatila massacre in 1982, she was going to the, the leader of the Falangists, if you know about that situation. I mean, there was 3,000 people murdered in just one day in Israel. And she screams to this guy, murder. She's really confronting that guy. She's American. She was an American journalist. And he and Mickelson, this guy, is saying, I never do thing, I never scream to anybody. But maybe he should. 
So I'm not just uh, mic putting the microphone there, uh, telling him to talk, I'm confronting him. And that's to be a little heretic or have some heresy in yourself you want to confront, you know. So being a filmmaker or being a journalist, I think that's very important. To, and it, for some people that's crossing a line you shouldn't cross, like him. He says to me, if I wanted to scream to somebody, I should maybe move over to a, 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 merch, a helping organization or something instead of being a reporter. But that's maybe too easy to say. Um, here is another guy I was interviewing. He's um, an intellectual in, in Kiev and in Ukraine. And let me give you a li little hint of when he, this guy is talking. The most horrible thing I've ever seen. You feel that, that you touch something that's almost beyond imagination and beyond human, the human capacity to, uh, to, um, to understand, in a sense. Yeah. He's, he's talking about the, it's maybe not the, you don't have the capacity to understand a massacre, he says. He talks about it. Um, the next one is Andrei Kurkov. He is... Um, he was growing up in Russia, so in a way he's uh, kind of uh, not Ukrainian, but still he has been writing 20 books and he's translated into 23 languages. So he's a really famous person. And to me, to, to approach him, to do a, an interview with him, the, the way I was doing these things, was first to meet him in a cafe and I was sitting there with two cameras. I, I always use two cameras when I meet people. So I can make a clip. I have a little clip there to the right. Uh, so, so the thing is to confront them with why are they doing this thing, being there, writing 20 books. So he was reflecting on the 20s, 30s, 40s of the Soviet Union, where he, where he grew up. And today he is not allowed to print books or sell books in Russia because he's too critical. So Putin don't like this guy. And we were talking about the cosmopolitan, and he's talking about all the ethnical minorities in Ukraine, etc. This way of non-nationalistic way of being. I mean, it's very typical for intellectuals to be cosmopolitans. They, they like the world to be together, that uh, people don't talk about their identity. I'm a Czech. It's more like I'm a European or I'm in a kind of togetherness. So this kind of anarchistic attitude we have, like, which is about freedom and solidarity, the solidarity is very important for us. Instead of building up all these enemy pictures, I'm, I guess you have seen a lot of enemy pictures the last years. If it's the terrorists, or it's, if it's Russia, I mean, all this kind of American propaganda or Russian propaganda against the others, I mean, all this kind of building en enemies is always making the, this world a more dangerous place. So being a person who's making films or, or doing articles, you should always try to uh, go against or, or try to get that tension lowered. Because there's too much weapons in this world, as you know, so they will soon maybe fire someplace if you don't help out. Yeah, maybe we, should, we could play this guy too. I, I didn't focus on this. I'm not always too concentrated, so we can see if you're a filmmaker that this is not focused, but let's, uh, let's see how that works. I mean, I wrote five novels about history of Soviet mentality because I wanted to find out the history of Soviet mentality and to, find, to understand how people felt and thought in 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s why we got where we got in the end uh, with Gorbachev and uh, with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Yeah, the sound is maybe too hard to hear. Huh? Here is another film that's, I think it's green here today. We did an interview with, um, with Gian, Gianfranco Rossi and this, in, this interview is about the, the film The Fire at Sea. I think it's green here this afternoon, yeah? Uh, you, can, you can see it on, on our website if you want to read this interview. Um, it's, but it's special about you can't just be a journalist, go there, a documentarian. He has to stay for one and a half year in this Lampedusa island. So he's actually a kind of re 
I think document, a lot of filmmakers doing documentaries, they are doing a lot of research. But usually a journalist is doing a quick job. So this is about why he was staying there for one and a half year and picking out two characters or one boy as the main character of the film, etc. This kind of building, an article building a film. And in this, this uh, newspaper, we are also um, uh, going into some photo essays or photo. This guy, he died this year and he has been doing a lot of documentary or aesthetical images, as you see, from Hong Kong. This kind of street pho photographer. I'm not sure if you understand the Norwegian, but it's the, the street photographer hanging around. And uh, for me, the aesthetical side of documentaries is very important. There's half of the documentaries today, they are not thinking about aesthetics. And that's why they're not going to be seen by so many. So, and another thing is the, the uh, book reviews we are doing. This is uh, two books about anarchism and about uh, capitalism today. Just giving you the financial capitalism is an important thing. I think I can tell you that we, in the newspaper, has three focus, which is important for us now, which is maybe the most pressing issues today. And that's uh, about conflicts, means militarism, weapons, this kind of thing. And we are, have uh, another big focus on control. The control society that we have, security, all these things going up. It's a new mentality and it has to be criticized. And the third thing is ecology, which is about life quality, philosophy, climate, food, all the positive things. We have to point to a direction. I mean, journalism or film has one, uh, what you say, uh, weakness, and that's always focusing on the negative. So we have focused two, two in two traits on negative things, but also ecology as a positive thing. I think that's important for you as students to think. If you always write, depends on what you say, how radical you are maybe, but there's too many radical or anarchist around who is so much for the negative things in the world and journalism or film is also about positive things for doing criticism i mean the, this greek term which is called krinine means to to make distinctions and distinctions is between negative and positive it's not only negative so if you're doing just a very negative article about things that's bad then you're not critical you should remember that you're not critical so ecology is helping up a little and, and this kind of war machine and this control society we have now, which is making that life a little hard to live, is balanced up with some of this kind of philosophical or life or ex existential matters you can find in this kind of attitude of the ecology, which means more than just nature. Okay, uh, let me tell you a little about What's an essay film? Going, I'm shifting a little from text now into film. Of course, an essay film, for me, I, I met some of these people like Karen Farocchi and others who coined this term, essay film. Have you heard of this term before, essay film? No? No arms? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think this is uh, important. There's a lot of pe people, at least in art, the art scene, who's saying I'm making an essay film, but it's not an essay film. So I'm trying to give you three, four points about an essay film to, or an essay text, which I've always already talked about, which is, um, I mean, the essay film is picking things from the text. Like uh, there was a philosopher called Adorno. He was talking about the innermost character of an essay is the heresy to be heretic, to be, uh, have a political attitude or, or be, that's something that you want, to, to, something you want to change. If you don't have that feeling that there's something at stake that you want to protest or want to ch see, see changed, you're not doing an essay. You don't have the f emotions, you don't have anything you want then you are more a technical news reporter. But that's okay too, we need that too, but I'm talking here about being critical. 
So the essay has the heresy. It's also an exp experimental style that you can test out things without having all the facts. You can maybe try to put some assertions up that you, this is possible in a scenario or something. So first the heresy, then the, the uh, test, and then excess means excess means test. And then you have the reflection. There has to be a dialogue with the, with, the right, with the reader or the audience that you're trying to say something. And the reflection comes mostly through the voiceover of a film. So if you do um, uh, some thinking about something you see, you are reflecting. So um, I think that's, uh, we can maybe keep it to that. Or it's a kind of text, uh, this voiceover. It's very important to have this voice. And yeah, the fourth thing is it's so big. It, it is subjective, not objective. You can be the person. I can be the person who's sitting there with an open mouth telling them that I'm so fascinated. That's okay. Of course, you can be subjective in an essay. Or you can take a position saying this is the Palestinians who's really fucked up by the Israelis. Because maybe you have been there and see them, as I have been for four years. So there is a lot of things you can put in from your own personality into a text. This is the fourth trait. If you are doing this today, I think you'll be a very interesting filmmaker or journalist. And you, if you have an editor who's saying, no, 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 you should do objective things, you should maybe argue for this, because this is so much more for the reader or for the audience of a film. If you can do this kind of testing a little, trying to make people think and also commenting and being a little radical to say well, there's something wrong here, I, I, you have to do something and also be maybe a little personal in the style, but not private. Personal is something else. Okay, um, and it's, it's also uh, between documentary, avant-garde, and art film, but that's kind of more formal. I, I, <coughs> I'm not sure for how much time we have, but I think I will show you a couple of film examples from Chris Marker. Have, do you know Chris Marker, one of you? Three, four, five, yeah. Chris Marker is uh, maybe the most famous essayist of all time. He was very political. He was uh, this Parisian guy. He was traveling the whole world, doing travelogues, commenting what he saw, a lot of voiceovers. He made this film called Saint Soleil and La Jeté, which is very famous. Um, <clears throat> La Jeté is a uh, 20 minutes kind of images coming after, a photo essay. It could be kind of journalist thing with text and then images, like you can maybe have a newspaper, 24 pages, that, that's the whole film. And one, one place there is an eye moving, <laughs> suddenly there is film, but then it's pictures again. So this is kind of experimental as an essay. And he, he also made some, some films about Vietnam and, um, and the anti-Vietnam movement in the States. He was in the Paris in the 68 and was filming people protesting there. And so, actually, I, ha I had a speech about Chris Marker in Tehran for 100 filmmakers. And uh, I was showing this very kind of anti-government films that he was, some clips from it. And suddenly there was a guy standing up there, I think he was 60 years old, screaming to me, why are you showing all this revolution revolutionary stuff? We had a revolution with Khomeini, we are finished with that. So, Chris Marker was really uh, <laughs> like that. And in the post, there was coming to a young person to me, no, don't listen to this guy. Our revolution is now, in the Green Revolution from 2009 on. So Chris Marker has a lot of things to say to people, I think, still. I will give you maybe some clips from his, uh, um, yeah, I mean, maybe first I can say that if, if, if you are in film school, teach that you should make a character-driven film. That's okay, but the new thing, or what you maybe should do if you are more, have something to say, which is means not only emotions. You can have a, not a character-driven film, you can have a topic-driven film. There is something you want to show, then it could be five characters, it shouldn't only be one protagonist. 
That's the films I'm making. I'm using more people to cover a topic. For example, the Arab Spring in Cairo, when I was there, I was interviewing 10, 15 people about the, the resistance, the revolutionary movement in Cairo, in Tahrir Square, where the soldiers were running around. You can see helmets going over your head and all this kind of very resistance. So there you can see the heresy of people. They didn't, they didn't want more of this kind of elitist government. So, I mean, this, this, uh, this way of making a critical reflection uh, combined with a topic is very important for an essay. And also that you have this voiceover thing and being in dialogue. So there's a kind of one-to-one -one talk when you... That's also good for journalism that you always think you're writing, writing to one person. Not this big audience. A typical documentary is for a big audience. You think there is 100 people there sitting in a screening room, but if you have another way of thinking this, is to address this one person sitting there and making his notes. It's him and me. Then you are suddenly starting a dialogue and making him think. And, and the essay film is also kind of making a contract. I mean, if you, if you can manage that, it, not everybody can make an essay film, but if you can manage to get this kind of dialogue with a person, you are succeeding to do something. I will show you a little clip from Alain René, which is from the Auschwitz, from the, from the camps. Yeah. Um, this is, a, you can hear the voiceover going here. Yeah, it's maybe hard to. But you see the the search. Pour vacances, avec une foire et un clocher peuvent conduire tout simplement à un camp de concentration. Le Struthof, Oranienburg, Auschwitz, Neuengamme, Belsen, Ravensbrück, Dachau, furent des noms comme les autres sur les cartes. I mean, his, this, this is actually talked by one of the concentration camp prisoners after the war. So it's kind of very, uh, this, was, this is the first essay film, they say. Um, back to Pasolini. He, as I told you, he was this heretic guy. Uh, talking about this review I was doing, it's about uh, uh, La Rabbia de Pasolini, or the ang anger of Pasolini. And uh, this, I told you about the voiceover who was commenting the time. Uh, what, uh, Queen Elizabeth was uh, crowned and there was all these people in the streets and he's saying what's in the mind of these millions just saying ho ho to the monastery. Do they know that they are suppressed, etc., etc.? She's maybe the richest person in England. Yeah? Um, so uh, this way of commenting, I'll just show you a little clip from that film. La bellezza sopravvissuta dal mondo antico richiesta dal mondo futuro, posseduta dal mondo presente, divenne un male mortale. Ora i fratelli maggiori finalmente si voltano, smettono per un momento i loro maledetti giochi, escono dalla loro inesorabile distrazione e si chiedono, è possibile che Marilyn la piccola Marilyn ci abbia indicato la strada. Ora sei tu, quella che non conta nulla, poverina, col suo sorriso. Sei tu la prima, oltre le porte del mondo, abbandonato al suo destino di morte. Of course, he has this melancholic trait. Maybe he has written much more than most people. I mean, this kind of seeing the whole situation, take it, it in, being an intellectual, it's also a burden. Okay, um, Chris Marker is the other guy. He, as I told you, he, he has so many books he has been, uh, films he has made. Um, I'll just show you a little clip from one of here, from the first here. This is from Vietnam, it's a criticism of Vietnam and the bombing. And this, you see this uh, pilot from an American airplane who is really so enthusiastic about seeing napalm going in and burning up villages. So we can list, just listen to this. Oh, outstanding! 
to really catch them out in the open. Well, we don't do that very often. Were you dead on target? Oh, absolutely. Did you think you got them? Oh, didn't we get them? Couldn't you see them run down there? Man, I know we got them. We could, uh, uh, I've got four 20 millimeter cannons you can see out here, and we really host them down by, by Joe. That's, uh, that's great fun. I really like to do that. Uh, the Army will go in this afternoon with helicopters and have a look around. They'll probably have to fight their way in because you can't ever get them all out of the bunkers. So uh, it should be fairly exciting. I really wish I could go in on a, a clearance search uh, immediately after one of our airstrikes, uh, just to see, you know, really how effective they are. They really praise us for, our, for these big bombs and the napalm especially. They really like that napalm because uh, when they get there, why they, the ones that the napalm hasn't burned up. And here you can see the consequences of this. I really like it, the pilot. He's really happy, he's smiling, he's making his job, you know. And here is the people on the ground. So, and this is happening now all over in Syria. I mean, not Na Napalm actually, but there is so much, as you know, happening now. So, I mean, we are living in a peaceful part of the world and isn't there a kind of obligation to tr try to stop these kind of things? I mean, as a filmmaker or as a, as a journalist, that's maybe a part of that business to do political films too. Uh, this is about Salvador Allende and I, th I think I will show you something from the from the more melancholic called San Soleil the, the, without sun which is a very famous film but uh, here is seeing three children in Iceland which is walking at the road and then later there is uh, the, the big uh, volcano thing and the whole island is covered in dark and this for him is a metaphor of something, happiness and then darkness. I mean, this kind of potential. I will maybe show you a little of this uh, time is running. The first image he told me about was of three children on a road in Iceland in 1965. He said that for him it was the image of happiness and also that he had tried several times to link it to other images, but it never worked. He wrote me, one day I'll have to put it all alone at the beginning of a film with a long piece of black leader. If they don't see happiness in the picture, at least they'll see the black. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, this way of clipping in film, suddenly there's an airplane after this happiness of the three children. And the next picture, you, you don't see it here, but it, the whole island is covered in dark ashes. This way of doing film back in the 80s. I'm sure you have other expressions that you want to do now, but uh, this is some of it. Um, Chris Marker is not very well known, but uh, he, as the, some people say, is the best known author of unknown movies, or maybe you can see the opposite way. Another guy is Harun Faraki, which is uh, more contemporary. He died uh, a year ago, two years ago. Uh, I met him in Lisbon and made an interview with him. And he was actually saying to me when I was, I was this kind of, what about the SF film, which you coined in 1984? Was, is that something that you will encourage people to do? And he answered me that if you go to a film school today, this theoretical approach, or maybe four things I said about tests, subjectivity, reflection, heresy, is teached at school. So you don't have to say yes anymore. You can just be a little more critical or experimental. So he was actually saying, "Is a film? Forget it." <laughs> but he was very tired, and he was—he uh, didn't want this interview. He was sick, and he was dying. So, in a way, he was not very enthusiastic at that time. But I will show you a couple of things he did. Uh, he was criticizing this Napal thing, as you saw in the Chris Marker. I will just show you this clip. Also führen wir Napalm an Ihnen und auf Ihre Kosten vor. Wir können Ihnen nur eine schwache Vorstellung davon geben, wie Napalm wirkt. Eine Zigarette verbrennt mit etwa 400 Grad. Napalm verbrennt mit etwa 3000 Grad Hitze. 
wenn die Zuschauer mit den Folgen von Napalm einsetzen, nichts zu tun haben wollen. So, he's, this is Farouk himself, sitting there, taking the 300 degrees of his cigarette into his arm and saying this is nothing compared to 3000 degrees, as the guy who was saying, seeing at the board. Are you willing to do things like this as a filmmaker? <laughs> Burning yourself to try to get emotions from the audience? I mean, he was doing it at least. And here's another one. It's from, um, it's from, the, um, uh, from this revolution of uh, Ceausescu in Romania. And he, this guy, I, I don't have time to show it, but <clears throat> here uh, Farok is showing in film how uh, the people who's listening to this guy is actually protesting and suddenly storming the palace of Ceausescu. And he's looking at what's happening here. He was giving them uh, a cent extra in, um, in the hour salary, so he thought they would be satisfied, but they were not, and they were storming the palace. And then you see Ceausescu running up in a helicopter and trying to get away. So this is a real revolution moment that he is showing. So this kind of changes, this movies that matters or something that matters, a topic is important for him. Maybe you can just see the start of this uh, Turan talking. Something rivets his gaze. Shouts surge up. His speech stops. The camera wobbles. A technical disturbance. The broadcast is interrupted. What had occurred? A film camera from the weekly newsreel was able to record some moments of the interruption. Here the rally is still proceeding in orderly fashion. People massed in front of an entrance to Central Committee headquarters. I think it's important. Again, there is a woman talking with a voiceover, like in Chris Martin. In the background. And this way of telling people what's happening or doing reflections. That's the kind of play between journalism and film. This, this way of making people think. Um, yeah, there is some traits about the SFMs you can maybe read about yourself, but uh, it's uh, more not inclusive. It's not more. It's not just confirming things. It's trying to be a little elusive, so people don't understand what they are talk what they are seeing at once. But suddenly you're understanding. So it's a little playing a little with the audience or the public. Um, and you should see to it yourself, as I was doing in the text I was starting with. Let me talk a little in the end here about, um, about uh, modern times online. New Tid in Norwegian means uh, modern times in English. So tomorrow morning uh, we are launching the, this uh, website, which is uh, the, the European Documentary Journal about documentary films. This is a successor to the Docs magazine, who was there 20 years, and I bought the whole archive. So there is 500 articles on this website, moderntimes.online, coming up tomorrow morning. And uh, for you as filmmakers, you will see a lot of journalism, reviews, and some essayistic style about films in this website. And based on the Norwegian uh, newspaper, we are having at least 10 articles and it's going to cooperate with a lot of others. So this is going to be a very vibrant website for documentary criticism in the coming years, I hope. Based in Berlin, it's uh, going to be uh, a website for reviews, views and interviews. And it's about film, documentary and also sometimes essay films and the political interviews, other things. Here is uh, one film called Reflections, actually, a Swedish film. Um, you see, the, I will just show a little of the website, uh, the European Documentary Journal. So uh, here is interviews, for example, Bill Morrison. Heard about him? Yeah, he was speaking here yesterday. We have this interview with him there, which is a cooperation with Doc Review here. And uh, some other people, Gian, Gianfranco Rossi. The Fire at Sea, as I talked about, that's in English there, so you can read it. And also this Mikkelsen, the war reporter, 
if you are a Peter Green array, I mean, there's different things you can read in this website. And, uh, and also, we have the Word of the Spirit, the, the thing I was talking about from Pasolini. And also, I was writing about this film called Last Year in Marine Ball by Alan René, which is a fantastic film about fragmentation clips, how to, to, to be elusive, for example, as the ACE film is doing. Etc. Etc. Percy riots, different things, and there's another film screen here about Hannah Arendt, a philosopher. I'm not sure when this week it's screened, but that's also uh, one of our reviews. So, and one, the last thing I would say is that we have this short film thing or, or video journalism combined here. Uh, things, for example, when we are interviewing people. I interviewed a lot of film directors with camera. So I, th I like, uh, like the labyrinths, no, not the labyrinths, but uh, what's his name again? Um, this novelist from South America, he's talking about, uh, Borges, he's talking about the, no the short stories that you, what you can say in 10 pages is not worth telling. And I'm saying what you can say in 10 minutes in a documentary is not worth telling. It means that you can concentrate a lot in a 10 minutes film. And in 2016, we have an audience out there who has a very short attention span. So I think from ten, three to 10 minutes, that's gonna be a very interesting format in the future. And you can also use the voiceover or the woman or whatever, or, or have this interview with a person. I mean, there's a lot of sm small format films, which I will encourage. And we, if you have something you are making, Maybe you should just contact us and see if you can screen it on this website to, to get some a big audience. Yeah, that was a lot huh? <laughs> to think about. Is there any questions in the end? I can maybe be outside in the post uh, if there's anything you want to hear or ask. Okay, thank you.